वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन आर चैनल दैट इज अचीव वाई एस सो फ्रेंड्स रिसेंटली द एन डी ए गवर्नमेंट दैट इज नेशनल डेमोक्रेटिक अलायंस गवर्नमेंट वन अ थम्पिंग मैंडेट इन द सेवनटीन लोकसभा इलेक्शन ऑन ट्वेंटी थर्ड मे सो आफ्टर दैट आर लोट ऑफ आर्टिकल्स आर कमिंग इन न्यूज पेपर अबाउट द चैलेंजेस दैट द न्यू गवर्नमेंट दैट इज लेड बाई द प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी that uh, that will be facing so there are various type of challenges that are being highlighted but the main challenge that has been uh, highlighted a lot is the economic challenge so uh, due to the enormity of uh, articles that were coming uh, in relation to this challenge i thought it would be uh, wise to form a complete video uh, on this topic so that you people can get an idea about the gist of the uh main challenge that uh, that the economy faces so here in this video we will be analyzing this challenge that is grand economic challenge before the narendra modi government of uh, uh, in, in its second term and we will also discuss the way forward so let's see uh, so friends uh, before taking on to, to the challenges let me uh, tell you that uh, what were the short term measures that were taken by nda one government Uh, it would be difficult to say that uh, uh, in it, it would be kind of difficult to present all the measures that were taken by nda government but the broad measures that uh, that must be mentioned here are uh, like income support provided by the nda government manrega that was initially started by upa1 government it was it was also uh, used for providing employment in rural areas and also there was public distribution system there was cooking gas under ujwala yojana and there was avas yojana and there were other also various types of initiatives that were taken by the narendra modi government and also there was uh, make in india uh, make in india initiative that was taken uh, for promoting uh, the manufacturing sector in india though this measure uh, uh, has proved to be not that much effective because uh, uh, the steps initial steps were taken but later on the government uh, kind of the focus of the government shifted from the long term measures to the short term measures and here we are highlighting the short term measures and all uh, and also uh, previous year uh, 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 near uh, when when the 17th lok sabha elections were approaching uh, the government uh, realized the enormity of the economic challenge um, and uh, realized that uh, the rural distress uh, distress is widespread and it announced uh, a reservation on the basis of economic criteria last year in order to placate Uh, uh, a lot of uh, general categories uh, that uh, that, uh, that were facing the pressure of uh, economy that were facing the slow down in economy where there were uh, also very various other measures but these measures cannot be uh, said to be sustainable or long term because that the, these measures are basically short term and they provide only temporary relief in, in simple words uh, if i say that what these me measures mean it me these measures means uh, mere survivability it doesn't ensure security and uh, sustainability so uh, let's see what are the key issues that the current government is now facing so obviously gdp figure recently released on friday uh, by the new government it found that the gdp was at 5 year low at 6.8% and also unemployment was at 45 year high at 6.1% so you can see that unemployment was highest in 2017 18 um, uh, in 45 years so it uh, the value of it was 6.1% so you can see the uh, gravity of issue so uh, other thing that is very important is uh, rural and farm distress uh, because uh, there is not that much consumption in rural areas and also uh agriculture sector is not uh, growing at a robust pace that's why uh, and and uh, if you know that uh, how much people in india are dependent upon the agriculture sector then you can realize that the farm distress means uh, uh, means a kind of ominous om ominous uh, ominous uh, signal for uh, for the whole economy because agriculture drives agriculture in india provides income to a lot of people and also other issue was of low consumption demand currently there is not that much consumption and it was reflected in uh, sl uh, uh, slowing down of sale of uh, 
automobiles and uh, other durable as well as fast moving goods so other thing that is very important is that despite the inflation being low despite the monetary policy being uh, kind of loose followed by the rbi uh, there is lack of private investment uh, private investors are not coming forward because uh, uh, you might be knowing about the phenomena of uh, dub, uh, uh, dub, uh, balance sheet syndrome so uh, it, there there is a kind of uh, uh, pressure in the in the balance sheet uh, in the balance sheets of private investors because they are facing the difficulty to repay their earlier loans and that's why they are not going for uh, capacity expansion or for uh, uh, we can say more uh, more investment so there is lack of private investment other thing is that uh, the banking sector is not uh, uh, not well because there are a lot of non performing assets uh, because uh, the private investors are not able to they are finding it difficult to repay their loans so that uh, non performing assets of banking sector is increasing and if non performing assets are increasing then certainly how the banks can operate uh, they are also not willing to cut down their rates as uh, as uh, so it, there is there is a much less resonance of uh, uh, the monetary policy that is uh, 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 announced by rbi at the ground level so banking sector is not following the uh, the, the approach that the rbi is adopting so there are also dilemmas before current government because uh, as i have uh, said you that consumer demand is less uh, bec uh so ultimately if you know a little about economy then consumer demand is very important because you can go for investment only when there is demand for your goods and if the consumer demand is not much the economy cannot revive so the uh, the main issue is of increasing the consumer demand so if it uh, simply means putting money in the hands of people and cutting taxes but uh, in in fact uh, 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 cutting taxes is also not feasible, feasible because the government has a sharp commitment towards containing fiscal deficit so fiscal deficit can be contained either by by reduced government expenditure or by increased revenues so cutting taxes means uh, uh, reducing the revenue source so that means high fiscal deficit so this is the kind of dilemma that the government is facing other thing that is that the government is facing is that uh, tax revenue is also uh, is decreasing because of the slow down because uh, the private investment is not uh, taking place new plants are not coming up so the tax revenues the profits are decreasing and uh, thus the net tax that the that is available to government as a revenue is not uh, uh, coming in that much amount but uh, the need is there to boost private investment private investment will only occur once the government provides the necessary boost it it uh, it provide uh, it makes complementary investments but uh, the government is not doing that and uh, thus private investment is also not picking up because uh, so as i have told you that the government is in complete dilemma so there are multiple issues that the government has to address other steps that uh, the government uh, in this context had to focus upon as i have highlighted you the major challenges as well as the dilemma so the steps that can be taken to revive the economy are mul uh, are multiple uh, these uh, steps cannot be contained in a single lecture but certainly i have tried to include as many issues as a, as as i can so the first major thing is of land and labor reform so why land and labor, labor reform so friends uh, if you know about economy and for uh, factors of production then you know that land and labor are important factors of production so land availability of land for for uh, kind of setting up of plant or uh, setting up of infrastructure is very important and when land acquisition Uh, acts are such that and land regulations are such that that they create much hindrances in the land acquisition uh, then certainly the uh, the uh, uh, land is not available to to the investor so uh, one one factor of production is not available but the output can only come with the combination of all the four production of uh, factors of production including entrepreneurship so land is not coming and also there are, there is a issue of labor reforms because as of now uh, there are or uh, 200 laws that that regulate uh, these uh, these Uh, uh, th th that regulate the firms relating to labor laws so the, uh, uh, there is a kind of um, over over burden on the firms for compl uh, com for complying with these uh, labor laws so also uh, the issue the other thing that the government can focus upon is disinvestment of public sector undertakings because there are a lot of public sector undertakings for example air india that is no that are not performing their revenues are are in negative and they are in fact a liability 
equity in the government so they the the government should focus on the disinvestment of them or, and uh, should infuse pr uh, private competition into them so that these psus either they can revive or they can uh, uh, they they can be disinvested the other thing is of recapitalization of banks because you know friends uh, capital is also a type of factor of production so uh, an investor or entrepreneur can only start its activity or can expand only if the credit is available to it and credit is available to 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 uh, to investor only if the banks are willing to lend and banks are not willing to lend because their uh, capital is the kind of uh, now their assets are non performing so there is a need to recapitalize these banks and also there is need to boost private con uh, consumption because the investors will only invest if they see that their products or goods or services will be uh, kind of bought by the people if there is not uh, the private consumption is not there then they will open Obviously, not invest because they have to. Uh, they 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 will invest only to sell their goods. But if there is no demand, they will not invest. Other thing is of addressing farm distress. So you know that the uh, the largest employer as of now in country is the agriculture. But the farm distress is high. Agricultural growth is low. Markets uh, uh, market. Uh, 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 we can say the remuneration that is available to far, uh, farmers currently is not uh, uh, viable and it is unsustainable other thing is of uh, solving job crisis as i have told you that unemployment is at 45 year high at 6.1% and we as a economy uh, now uh, has a uh, has a lot of youth population so in order to make that population productive we must provide them uh, jobs as well as we must provide them skilling activities so that they can get skilled and can uh, can Uh, can can become viable in the job market other thing is of uh, structural reforms in economy rather than just uh, using political bombs so what here it means so uh, the government uh, there was also a, a debate about the direct income support um, even before the 17th uh, Lok uh, Lok Sabha elections but let me tell you friends the ultimate and the best possible solution and the only sustainable solution is providing jobs to uh, people because uh, if you provide some Uh, a small amount of income or if you provide them insurance uh, a small amount of insurance or pension that is uh, a kind of we can say a temporary thing that helps them uh, simply survive but it doesn't ensure their security the best a uh, solution is the security of the people and that security can come only when there is sustainable livelihood available to people so brahmastra is simple brahmastra is that the new prime minister has to focus upon the sustainable livelihood because it is irreplaceable ideal approach for addressing joblessness including addressing insecurity poverty and economic hardship faced by people and also by the economy as a whole so this is the brahmastra so what do you mean by structural reforms in economy so as i have told you land and labor reforms uh, because uh, now currently there are 200 old labor laws with which the large firms employing more than 100 employees have to comply so th uh, these large firms have to uh, face a lot of regulation regulation in fact when they when they want to lay off they can't lay off they need government permission so this is a kind of burden on the large firms so it is also kind of uh, uh, it is also Encouraging small firms to 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 switch to uh, large firms and thus preventing the benefit of economies of scale. For that purpose, there is a need that small firms must be encouraged so that they can later on transform to large firms and they can get integrated in the global value chains and then can contribute to the export potential of the uh, of of the country. But now the labor law, uh, laws are such that uh, uh, the uh, the small industries are not encouraged. they are not willing to move to uh, to to switch to larger Uh, uh forms that's why there is a need of land and labor reforms other thing is that of eliminating exemptions because there are currently lot of exemptions that are given to uh, corporates so the need is to eliminate these exemptions and also to reduce the rates in simple words it means simplification of tax compliance procedure other thing that is very important is data integrity and credibility so what type of data integrity and credibility so here friends come the uh, we can say like uh, central 
central statistical organization if it is publishing uh, the gdp uh, growth rate then it must be credible and also if the job data is coming it must be credible and it must be um, uh, must be kind of we can say prepared by uh, following the proper methodology so that the people uh, people think uh, uh, the investors uh, 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 think that they are not uh, uh, fooled by the government or by its institutions so only if there is clear mechanism institutional mechanism that is independent for data collection and information dissemina dissemination then only the precise and authentic policy making can take place and also then only the investor confidence can increase otherwise investors will think that the government is fooling them by uh, by presenting them the fudging numbers so this is these are the basically structural reforms so this is uh, uh, all about today's lecture and this is all about uh, we can say a gist of the articles that have been uh, pu published after uh, 23rd may that is the uh, day of the results when the uh, results of the 17th lok sabha elections came so this is all about uh, this lecture friends if you want uh, to download the pdf of this uh, lecture you can visit our website that is www.achieveies.co.in so we have freshly made this website uh, currently it is not it will be uh, it will not be showing if you just fill achieveies but if you fill complete link in your uh, uh, taskbar in your google taskbar then you will see our website and then you there you can go and uh, you can download our test series and we are also running lot of initiatives for the purpose of 2020 upsc uh, csc and uh, you can join them and can can uh, uh, can can uh, streamline your preparation for the purpose of civil services examination so this is our email id shown on your screen and lastly friends if you like this video if you like this lecture that then do ensure that you share it with your friends and also uh, uh, tell us in the comment box uh, comment box if you have any suggestion we will certainly look into it and lastly we request you people to please subscribe subscriber channel and do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get all the notifications of the updates that we do on our channel so thank you friends have a very nice day